Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, attending our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar session. This week we'll be talking about Back to Basics, the modify commands, and this is continued from a previous session. Um, for presenters, we have Volker Coco and Jessica Thrasher joining us, and we've got moderators. Uh, I'm Victoria Studley. We have Sarah Emsley and our expert elite, uh, Nauman Mysorawala. Uh, I'll run a couple of polls like we typically do, and then I'll turn it over to Volker. All right, so if you're joining us uh, for the first time or you're returning, we'd like to know, um, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? So go ahead and answer that. I'll leave it open for a few seconds. Looks like the majority of people are returning. And I'll close this out. And there we go. All right, our second question is, oh, where did we go? Uh, here we go. Which AutoCAD-based application do you use? You use AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, uh, one of the vertical products like Architecture, MEP, AutoCAD Electrical, Mechanical, Plant, um, Civil 3D or Map, or something else? And it looks like we've got a majority of AutoCAD users, followed by LT, uh, some Civil and Map, and then the other verticals, Architecture and MEP, and uh, somebody out there um, with a, a different product there. So I'll close this out. And one last question before I turn it over to Volker. And that is, do you use social media to interact with Autodesk? We'd like to know, uh, do you reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, in the discussion groups, uh, LinkedIn, or do you not connect with us at all uh, over social media? So how do you like to contact us? All right, and I'll close this one out. Looks like the majority of people don't use social media, but we've got a lot of uh, people who are active in the forums, uh, followed by some of the other media. All right, so I'll close that out, and Volker, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, I also want to welcome Steve Bissett, whose name I neglected on the PowerPoint. Welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for those of you who are returning and all those who are new to the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinars. Uh, we will be, as Victoria stated, uh, presenting some more modify commands. We uh, had some in our previous sessions. Uh, so we're going to show a few more this particular session. And we also have a big announcement to make. So stay tuned for that. It'll be coming up, coming up in a few slides. Let's take care of some house cleaning. Uh, those who have returned, yeah, I'm sorry to bore you again with the same old stuff, but we got to get this out. Go ahead and uh, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. We will answer those throughout the webinar uh, and after the webinar, uh, as time allows. Um, and actually, we do tend to stay a little later after the webinars to try and answer everybody's questions. This session will be recorded, and the slide deck and data set will be available for download at our Autodesk Box account, AutoCAD IQ. That link will be made available in the post-webinar survey. Our Autodesk Help webinar series, we have a landing page. You may or may not have been there. If you haven't been there, check it out. We do have the latest um, uh, scheduled webinars listed there. Uh, this image is a little outdated, but uh, the web is updated. You can visit that at uh, this URL. Again, uh, the link will be made available in the post-webinar survey, uh, and we can later on paste that into the chat window as well. Um, go ahead and leave questions on our landing page after the presentation if you uh, choose to do that. If uh, things pop up, you have additional questions. Um, you can also leave feedback on the current webinar, any future webinar, webinar ideas. Uh, so if you have thoughts about what we should be presenting, let us know. We'll try to implement that. 
Uh, you can also send feedback to our autodesk.help.webinars address at autodesk.com. Be sure to put build your AutoCAD IQ in that subject line so that we know it refers to this webinar. We've had 30 odd previous webinars. Well, there's only 30 listed here, somewhere I miscounted. And uh, our last one, of course, was what's new in AutoCAD LT. Oh, that's what I miscounted. We had AutoCAD as well, what's new in AutoCAD, and then a repeat of that LT. So uh, we're on webinar number 33 today. You can find all the previous webinars on our YouTube channel, AutoCAD Exchange, Build Your AutoCAD IQ. So check those out if you missed the previous ones. Do want to show a couple things on our Autodesk Knowledge Network, uh, some of the featured articles. Uh, and this is, if you haven't been to the AKN, this is a great place to go for resources. We list our top articles for troubleshooting, known issues, uh, as well as we have downloads and tutorials available there. Um, and uh, here are some examples of some of the articles, uh, error messages you may be receiving and what you can do about those error messages. Uh, recently, we discovered a problem with AMD drivers crashing AutoCAD 2016 products, um, and so this has information about that and how to fix that. Um, another crash installing a Windows security update, and some of the most common errors you may see. Uh, so there's information available uh, by the boatload on this website. Also, hot fixes, service packs, and downloads for both AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and I should mention any other Autodesk products, really. So, um, but uh, these webinars are focused on AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. So, our big announcement. Um, I'm going to present to you Jessica Thrasher, who is with our social media community uh, to uh, talk more about the Autodesk Answer Days. And I'm hoping, Jessica, that you are available. Hi, Volker, can you hear me? I can. Hi, Jessica. Oh, okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, I had a little bit of a connectivity issue there. So thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate uh, you guys giving me some time out of your busy schedule. So I will try not to take up too much of your time. Great. Um, I'm going to advance to the next slide because we're happy to hear you here. Have you here. <laughs> so we are going to be hosting the first ever AutoCAD Answer Day on May 7th from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, it's going to be hosted in the Autodesk community in the AutoCAD category page. And this event is really for our great customers and really giving them an opportunity to, to ask Autodesk questions directly. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So this is a um, kind of a mock-up of what the land, well, not a mock-up. This is the landing page for the Autodesk Answer Day series. What we're doing is we're kicking off the series with AutoCAD. So we're going to start the first event with AutoCAD Answer Day. This is when customers can come to us and ask us any question about AutoCAD that maybe they've wanted to ask. We're going to have a great staff on board and um, we'll be sure to answer everything that we can. Uh, the event is also going to be global but hosted in English. So we definitely encourage you to come and ask your questions and definitely give us a good challenge. Uh, next slide. Um, the types of people that are going to be participating, as you can see, we have a really great, great variety. Um, this is to ensure that we can answer every question that is asked of us. We really do want to make this a true Q&A live session, and this was kind of inspired by a few different events, and it really had to do with kind of, I don't know if anybody is familiar with um, Reddit's AMAs or Ask Me Anything, but we kind of did want to take some ideas from that, as well as some other, um, let's say, uh, companies in the industry who have done the, their type of expert days when they do a kind of all hands on deck answering in the community. So we think it's going to be a really fun day. We're going to have all types of folks there to answer all of your questions and just make sure that you post in that correct board. So um, next slide. Um, so we really do want to make this event as big as possible. This is the first time we're ever doing it and we're really excited because 
you know, we have a lot, there's a lot of reasons for doing this. We want to drive traffic to the community. We want to increase accepted solutions and really just improve the content and the community. Um, by doing that, we wanted to make sure that we invite all new users. So we're branching out beyond the community and even just beyond um, just our typical customer service channels. Um, we're also going to be posting these promotions in the AutoCAD verticals in the Autodesk community. Hopefully um, most people here are familiar with that. Um, we also have a very prominent, you know, bloggers community, and I'm not sure maybe folks here have heard of a Sean Hurley or Lynn Allen, and they are just so wonderful, and we hope that, you know, we'll be able to have their support too in, the, um, in promotion. Uh, we also are going to answer every question, so no customer type will ever be turned away. We're working really closely with the education team to make sure that as many students as we can get will participate. Also with the channel partners, you know, um, resellers are, are our partners, so that's really great as well. Um, and something also I should have added to this list, but I have an icon for is our Autodesk Expert Elite. They are, um, you may have uh, seen them post in the community or know of them on this program, and they are basically our super users. So we hope that they'll also participate, but we're also helping them, for, um, hoping that they'll help us with the promotion as well. Um, we're going to have folks from the developers networks also help us promote. Internally, we're working a lot with other teams to make sure that even, you know, sales and customer service and, you know, anybody else that um, talks to customers really, really gets an opportunity to promote this and let them know this is a great free live event that's happening for 12 hours. Um, we'll also be promoting on the cover of .com. So up in their rotating banner, um, we'll have a little um, Autodesk Answer Days banner. Uh, next slide, please. And so one of the reasons I'm here today is to definitely promote the event, obviously, and we really would love your support in helping us get people there. Um, we also would love for you to ask your questions. We, we want to hear what you have to say. We're very interested in the types of questions that customers have, and we do already, you know, of course, have an AutoCAD community. That is more, it's more peer-to-peer -peer support there, but this is really a chance for our customers to have direct access to Autodesk, to employees and the folks who really design create, and support AutoCAD. So here is the URL for the landing page, and you know, um, anywhere you want to share this would be wonderful. We'd really appreciate your help, and I'm sure that you know you have colleagues or you know friends or fellow users that would also love to participate that you know maybe we haven't reached yet. So we'd really appreciate your help, and we really hope for a spectacular event. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? I know that was a very brief overview. I just don't want to take up too much of your guys' time. I know you have some valuable material to go over, so I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any came in. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll wait for a moment to see what happens there, uh, Jessica. But uh, one thing I want to say is there, for those who have uh, attended our webinars, you all know we don't always have all the answers to all of your questions. This is the opportunity to um, ask what you want to know about, what you need to ask, what problems, uh, make feature request enhancements, have a, maybe you have uh, uh, something you'd like to talk about with these subscription um, uh, people uh, from the Autodesk account. Ask those questions. This is your opportunity. Thanks, Walker. So, let's see. Let's see if we have any questions yet here. Kind of. Okay. Um, I feel. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. We're uh, we're looking forward to this. Um, all of us from the webinar teams will be there, and uh, Jessica will be. And uh, Jessica, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. All right. <laughs> okay. So. Let us, uh, again, I want to thank Jessica for being here. Let's talk about this week's agenda. And that includes, but is not limited to, uh, these modify commands. All right, so we're going to talk about the fillet command, or fillet if it's real close to lunch. All right, so we're going to talk about that command, uh, the camphor command. Uh, and I'm not going to going to detail right now. I'm just going to kind of list these out. The break command. So again, if you want to take a break, <laughs> coffee. All right, the trim command and the extend command. Uh, so 
not necessarily in this order. In fact, um, I'm not sure what order we're going to go in. I'm just going to make this up as I go. Let us go ahead and move over to my AutoCAD. And we're actually going to start off, uh, as soon as I switch screens here, to uh, start off with the break command. All right, the break command, all of these commands, can be found under the modify. Can you guys see my screen, Victoria, maybe just verify? All of these uh, commands. Ah, great. Thank you, Victoria. All these commands can be found under the ribbon, the home tab, um, under the modify panel. And there's actually, if you're just kind of getting familiar with these uh, ribbons, there's a um, flyout panel here as well. And this is actually where we find the break command. Obviously, if you have toolbars, you can access them off of the modify toolbar. And there's probably a modify to toolbar. And uh, you can also, of course, type them in the command line. So what does the break command do? It does exactly what it says. It breaks things. Okay, it breaks a line, basically, or an object uh, similar to a line, an arc. Um, let's see how it works. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And by the way, I'll have this data set available a little, um, for you, as well as the PowerPoint uh, for download. Um, as well as some steps to follow uh, in case you do want to try this out. I'll go ahead and for right now select the break command off of the uh, ribbon. And note the command prompt here. It says break select object. So I'm going to go ahead and select this vertical line here. And then notice what it's doing here, the, the highlighting. This is actually showing me if I were to pick again, it would break that line work and leave a gap there. Uh, note the command line that says specify the second breakpoint or first point. Well, I'm going to type F for first, and I'm just going to go ahead and disable my O snap so they don't interfere. And I'm going to pick a point here on the line and a point here, and I've broken that line work, uh, created a gap there. Now, um, may not have noticed, and actually I tried not to point it out, by repeating this command, and I hit, just hit the space bar, I'm going to go ahead and select this vertical line mark here, and I'll type F for first. Now what I'm going to do is with my O snaps enabled, I'm actually going to pick the center point of this circle and the center point of this circle. So I've basically referenced two points in order to break or put a gap within this object. There's some additional functionality with the um, break command. We'll get to that uh, in a few more moments. So anyway, break command can be very useful. All right, let's take a look now. And we're going to mix some of these commands together as we work here. All right, uh, so a brief overview right now of the trim command. And I've kind of laid these out uh, like this with the A, B, C, D, and so forth uh, for you who are downloading the data sets. The trim command also can be found on the modify um, dropdown. You'll see we have trim, and right underneath that, in fact, is extend. Uh, these are both um, the column siblings, if you will. Uh, they have a lot of features that are um, uh, similar to each, uh, or identical, actually. So we click Trim, and it prompts me to select objects or select all. Well, I'm just going to be very particular right now, and I'm going to go ahead and choose what is called a cutting edge. All right, so in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and select the magenta line work here. Whoops, let's do a crossing window. I'll also go ahead and select this line work here. Once I'm done, I'm going to just enter or right mouse click or space bar. And then I can either, if you note the options, I, I can use a fence or a crossing. Um, for the most part, I guess you'd use these uh, like crossing as a script because you automatically go into a crossing mode when you select something. Uh, you would have to tell it, hey, I want to use fence. 
And what fence does, it draws a line uh, through the objects I would like to trim. So let's go ahead and try that here, actually. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a, some line work. There we go. Draw a fence through that, enter, and it trims that off as expected. I can also, of course, pick, zoom in on that a little, pick, pick, and if I messed up, I could undo. All right, so that's all built into that command. Now remember we uh, selected this as a cutting edge as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a crossing window over this line work and note how as I select that, even though this doesn't intersect, it has trimmed those line objects. The reason it did this, and I guess it's been a while since I've used this functionality, but uh, it's part of a um, option here called Edge. Uh, it's actually the Edge Mode system variable, which by default actually used to be turned off. And it appears to be turned on nowadays to where I automatically have this invisible cutting edge. And uh, It's a pretty cool feature to have where you don't have to worry about extending a, a cutting edge that you want to trim off of. So uh, uh, nice little feature there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to, we'll get back to trim in a, uh, in a moment. Right now I'm going to go ahead and use the extend command. And it basically works the same way. It gives, tells me, hey, extend, select objects, or select all. I'm going to go ahead and select this line work right here. And instead of a cutting edge, what it's looking for is a boundary edge. Okay, so again, I've selected uh, whoops, C and line work D. And again, I could go ahead and um, use a fence if I choose to. And notice the preview. So I'll go ahead and pick, and it extends it to this line work. Or I could uh, use a window here as well, or just any selection method really works nowadays. And again, notice the uh, that I don't have to have this intersect with the line work. Uh, unlike this one right here, it's got an invisible boundary, so to speak. Um, again, these are two very similar commands, uh, just a bit opposite. But at the same time, uh, you may have noticed there's when I first went into these commands, or even at any of the prompts here, select object to extend, or shift select to trim. So basically what that means, if, if I hold down on the shift key, and let's go ahead and do this, shift key, I guess I need to select my stuff. Probably shouldn't have ad-libbed. Yeah, don't. I? Oh, that's because I have the cutting edge way over there. Okay, so either way, you can get <laughs> awkward moment. <laughs> We're all used to this, right? Um, anyway, uh, shift within the trim command. We'll do it again in a few moments. We'll. Uh, change it to the extend command, and vice versa. Shift within extend will shift it to trim. So very cool functionality. I'll, and I'll show you in the next example how we can use that. I should never ad lib and I never learn. Let's take a closer look at the trim and extend command. And we'll also incorporate the break command. What I'm going to do is change this, E3, into this no-named example. You'll notice I don't have a name under there. And what I'm going to do is use the extend command. And I'll go ahead and select it off of that ribbon again. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter command to select everything. 
So anything in this drawing right now, I can extend to if I wanted to. And so, in fact, I'll go ahead and zoom in down here so we can all see this. Now, the problem with using the Enter All option is that you are going to have some complications. So here's an example. This It's not a big deal. Uh, right now, it just wants to extend to this line work right here. And in fact, this line work wants to extend over to that line work to the right. All I have to do is pick and then pick one more time. Whoops. There we go. Pick one more time. And I've extended that line work. So it was just two additional picks by having done that. All right, now I'm going to hold down on the Shift key. And uh, because we did select everything, I'm going to have to do some additional picks here, right? Notice the three different cutting edges here. All right, so if I pick here, trim here, and then try to trim this, it says, hey, wait a minute, um, not trimming. Why not? Well, there's nothing to trim from. We've we trimmed off these objects here. So what I'm going to do is um, erase this. Yeah, erase this after the fact. Uh, within the trim uh, fillet command, well, actually, I shouldn't digress on that. We'll trim this afterwards. But this is the type of stuff you have to be aware of when you are using Shift to select everything. And it's just a minor thing. We can do an erase thing later. Not a big deal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, Shift key. Yeah, I extended that by accident. Shift key. Trim. Go ahead and trim it this way. So normally I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't use Shift All for something like this, but we're doing some examples here, right? All right, so we cleaned that up a bit. Now I'm done working with all that, and I pretty much have this drawn. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up by getting rid of this line work. And now I'm going to use the break command. All right, so the break command, um, whoops, I probably should have trimmed some additional stuff here. I noticed I didn't do it over here either. Oh, I guess I did. I knew what I was doing. I'm digressing. All right, there's an option here, break at point. All right, what this allows me to do, it's just a macro. Okay, so if I were to hit finish this command right now, hit enter, it would not repeat this command the way I expect it to. I'll show you what I mean here. Uh, again, you'll kind of want to watch command prompt here. It says break, select object. All right, I'm going to go ahead and select this object. And um, then it says specify first break point. Well, earlier when I showed you the example, I had to type in F for first. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Use the intersection option right here. Oh, snap. And notice how as soon as I picked here, it put the last referenced point symbol here. OK, that's what it entered at the command line. So I picked the intersection, and it said, OK, for your second point, I'm picking your last referenced point. Let me go ahead and. Um, Actually, I hardly ever use the intersection, so I actually have to go into this dialog. Yes, I know. That was terrible. Okay, so if I hit, um, let's pretend that I uh, hit enter instead of going into O snaps. All right. It again is going to prompt me to select the object and then first point. So I would actually have to type F for first point. I'll pick my first point and then use the last reference point in order to break it. And what it did, all this did was it just created an individual line segment. Obviously, there are other ways to do this. 
trying to demonstrate the break command, okay? So let's, um, again, just repeat this off of the modify flyout so you can see what happened, and then we will go ahead and do it manually as well. So break at point. So I picked this. It says, okay, pick your first point. I'm picking it. And it has actually created this length of segment here, of line, line segment. I want to break it here. If I just repeat the command, it says break select object, all right, selecting that. And then it says, okay, specify second point or first. So it didn't enable that macro. So I'm just going to type F. And I'll go ahead and use this intersection and last reference point. And there's my line segment. So why did I do this? Well, I want to go ahead and make this here maybe hidden line work. And there it is. So I may want to change the LT scale there, whatever. Uh, but that is the break command and trim and extend. Okay, so we incorporated those three. Let's talk about the fillet, fillet, and camphor command. These are also, uh, think of them as siblings. Okay, here's fillet and camphor. So the difference between these two is that fillet allows me to um, create arc, arcs, shall we say, arced, uh, arcs, arc corners. It allows me to also trim and extend objects at the same time. I can set a radius of zero or whatever value I would like. So it's a cleanup tool, but it also creates corners, whether those are arcs or linear corners. Camphor does basically the same thing. It'll clean up those corners as well, but it creates bevels. And it does this based on a distance and a distance or a distance and an angle, your choice. So first of all, let's take a look at um, fillet, and this is F at the command line. Its default setting is a radius of zero. Mine's actually set to 0.5 just because I was using it. All right, so I'll just set it back to zero right now. and Let's go ahead and take a look at the line work here. I'm going to go ahead this um, horizontal line and vertical line. So it prompts me to select my first object to fill it, and then my second. And notice how it's not only extending the horizontal, it's also trimming the vertical. All right, pretty groovy stuff. All right, I can also go ahead and instead of making that a linear corner, turn it into more of an arc. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat uh, the fillet command. I just hit enter. And I'm going to go ahead and type R for radius. And let's go ahead and put in a radius of 0.5. And it would have cleaned this up and created this nice little curve. Let's take a look. We'll go back to that ladder there in a moment, but let's take a look. What would it do to an object like this? Okay, well, maybe I'm designing packing material. Okay, so I'm going to go into the fillet command by repeating it, typing R for radius, and this time let's go ahead and give it a radius of 1. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this circle, this circle, repeat. And, yeah, i got to do a little bit of a cleanup using maybe the trim command. But, basically, I've uh, created um, some packing material. Or maybe Mr. Peanut's little brother. I don't know. But just kind of uh, some of the functionality it has. Here's one I used to use when uh, working with di wiring diagrams. So this has been around forever in three days, obviously, because that was way back when. Uh, I'm going to go into fill it, but what I want to do right now is I've had to repeat the command. First of all, I'm going to change the radius to 0.5 again. 
Then I'm also going to tell it I want M for multiple, so I don't always have to repeat the command. And I'm also going to change a, uh, an option here called trim. And this is a variable called trim mode, which affects both fillet and camphor. All right, just like edge mode affected both um, extend and um, trim. All right, so what this does, I'm going to go into trim. And I want to tell it no trim. So I'm going to just type N. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim the line work. And what it does is it leaves the original objects intact and will go ahead and add the arc in this case to that line work. So that's an option you can have. And maybe, you know, you could maybe make some hidden line work out of this or whatever your need may be. Um, but it allows you to keep that original object intact and add that art line work. If you are finished with the trim command and you don't want that option anymore, you could have changed this in the command itself, or you can modify the system variable, changing it from 0 to 1. And now trim mode is no longer enabled, and um, you would draw your arcs as you normally would. So uh, edge mode, same thing, it's a system variable you can type in. Uh, the fillet command also, uh, Victoria showed this off last week, just real quick, like if you need to quickly cap uh, some linear uh, work, it doesn't even really have to be linear, it could be at an angle, using the fillet command, regardless of what radius you have, you can actually real quick, like uh, create some caps, end caps for any uh, line work that you may need that you don't have to worry about what that radius or diameter is in order to get that job done. So some nice little functionality there as well. All right, let's apply this to some other work here. All right, so I've got the same basically uh, finished object, except this here is a polyline, and uh, this is just regular line work. I basically want to create this out of this. I'm going to use fillet and camphor and I'll, um, as well, uh, as well as uh, the trim command in this case. So first of all, I want to clean it up. So I'm going to go into the trim command, and I'm just going to type TR, and I'm going to select everything. And having done that, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oops, I need to turn off that uh, edge mode. That's going to interfere here. No extend. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, grab this line work very easily. I'm able to trim uh, to uh, trim that stuff out of there. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. So uh, unlike the um, extend command, where I couldn't do this, I'm not sure why that. I guess you wouldn't need it with the, uh, but I've got debris left over here, right? So the uh, trim command actually has an erase option, which I was kind of hoping was going to be available when I hit shift to trim earlier. Uh, you learn the hard way by ad-libbing. Um, but this allows me to, whoops, quickly put a window around stuff that has been left over. So I'm quickly able to erase that stuff. All right, so let's take a look. I've got this, but I want to add some corners to um, some bevels and maybe even some uh, fillets. Um, we'll just add some bevels here uh, to this to these objects. So I'm going to do that using the camphor command, which we really haven't talked about yet. Camphor command is very cool, but it um, Got to kind of watch what's going on. So by default, the current camphor distance would be 0, 
for distance one, zero for distance two. These just happen to be the same distances or last distances I've used. So I'm going to go ahead and right now select the first line that I want to um, apply the distance of one unit to. In this case, I want one unit to be on the horizontal and two units being beveled off of the uh, vertical. So pretty cool. If I chose to do so, I could repeat that camphor command and then go into the angle option. And here, my last instance used was one unit. I'm going to accept that. And I last used an angle of 30 degrees. So in this case here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick, uh, accept that, and then pick here for my first, which would be the distance. And then for the angled part, 30 degrees, I'll pick this here, and that allows me to put a nice little bevel. I probably would never draw anything like this, but uh, just trying to show you how the command works. Uh, just like the um, fillet command, it once you've completed the command, uh, you have to repeat it. So one of the options Camphor has, just like fillet, is a multiple mode. And then a way to quickly, right now it's set to length and angle. I want to go back to distance. Um, I don't know how much of an uh, advantage this is, but um, I'm going to go into the method option. And this allows me to quickly go to distance. And it doesn't prompt me for the distances. It uses the ones I defined earlier. So I don't have to redo that every time. OK, so pick, pick. There we go. And again, I'll use method. I'll go back to angle and pick, pick. All right, so yeah, OK, bad drafting. Opposites are bad. It doesn't matter. Uh, basically. The big difference is that method allows me to not have to enter the values if I'm going to use the same ones over and over. All right, one option that I haven't showed you is that um, the fillet and camphor command both have a polyline option. All right, so I need to place maybe fillets. Let's actually get out of this here because it'll be more appropriate with a poly uh, fillet. Change the radius to one. Yeah, sure. Why not? And instead of doing each corner here uh, individually, because it is a polyline object, All I have to do is tell, look, I'm going to select this polyline, and you need to do what you got to do to that entire polyline object. So uh, did some nice, quick work there for me. Uh, yeah, I believe that's about it. So that leaves us, uh, let me just finish up with some slides here, and then we'll answer some questions. Hopefully we can answer them all. Let's go over to screen two. And uh, so I've put some additional resources here. One is Autodesk Help. This is uh, Jessica's uh, little spot on the web where you can uh, actually find all kind of, kinds of uh, information on our, the communities, uh, ask help from uh, a lot of different Autodesk employees. We also have the uh, Autodesk Network community, which are the discussion forums. Hitchhiker's Guide to AutoCAD Basics. This is a tutorial uh, for those beginning AutoCAD, or maybe they aren't familiar with the command in AutoCAD. Check out this Hitchhiker's Guide. Uh, some more information about fillets. Oh, fillets. I'm hungry. About camphers. Breaking and joining objects. There's actually the join object um, opposite the, 
the yang to the yin of the break command, trimming and extending objects, and then finally, some coming attractions. We're going to get a bit geeky next week. We're going to talk about line types, how to work with them, how to make your own. So for me, it'll be fun. I don't know about the rest of you. Uh, again, the AutoCAD answer day is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on May 7th. Uh, join us. Ask what you need to ask. So, then Steve, on May 14th, will be doing an introduction to 3D modeling in AutoCAD. So, um, some good stuff coming our way, and we'll have more to come as well. So, I stole Jessica's slide, and we're ready to answer some questions, if anybody has any. So, we have a few questions in the... Uh in the chat window here at Volker. Um, okay. I'll start with one. It, it looks like uh, Nauman might have uh, addressed it um, by suggesting that they use the PEDIC command, but uh, the question was, is there a way to make line work into a polyline without having a reference polyline and using the polyline join command? Well, um, okay. Uh, I mean, yes, there is a way to uh, create a polyline out of a uh, regular line, and that is to use that, uh, and I, I don't know where it is on here, I always type PE <laughs> uh, for the PEDIT, P-EDIT command. It stands for poly-edit, right? Polyline edit, yes. And um, it'll prompt me to, do I want to turn this into a polyline? Because it's not, yes. I didn't have to type Y, I wasted time. And then I'm going to use the join option and uh, that will allow me to join that. Um, uh, and it Over, sounds like, yes. Are you demonstrating that? Uh, because we're just seeing that. <laughs> well, you, you can't see past that. Oh, um, no, it's just green. <laughs> Good grief. I did that a couple of webinars ago. Awkward moment. All right, let's do this again, eh? Um, can can you see my screen now? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Sarah neglected to tell me that she's actually sitting right next to me, and she just let she's laughing. All right, P edit. That's what we used here. And uh, again, there it is. I can never find it. All right, P edit, polyline edit, and um, I pick an up. It prompts me, do I want to turn this into one? Duh. Yes. That's why I'm selecting it. So I hit enter, and then I'm going to use the join option, and enter, enter again, and that creates one line object. I, I'm not sure if that's what the question was exactly. Um, if you have, uh, if you use that join command, uh, or even the um, the fillet command, and one of the objects is a polyline, it's going to convert the non-polyline, the regular dumb line, to a polyline. Hopefully that answered. I, I think that covers it. Um, we, we were getting a lot of uh, comments about the join command being a little quicker than Pettit. You can just go directly to join. Oh, yeah. Um, P-Edit's been around longer, and it does a lot more. You know, P-Edit allows me to give a width, add or remove vertices, reverse the polyline. Uh, the join command is a much quicker. It is found uh, under modify, and it is right here next to the break command. So, and it just pick two objects, converts. All right, you want another one? Please, please. Okay, ready? Uh, when you were showing trim earlier on your cursor, had a dynamic s selection method that I have not been able to duplicate. Was that a selection within the command to make that work? Um, by dynamic. Okay, the trim command, was it? Correct. Yep, when you were showing Walker, trim. This is Naman. 
Yes. Uh, hey, yeah, there were a couple questions about this. Uh, this was a question where you, with the new selection method, uh, where you can just hold the mouse button and drag it. Uh, it creates that dynamic sensing. I think I believe that's what they are talking about, and because it's you can't do it within the command itself, but you can start with that before you issue the prim command. Oh. Um, and. You know, Naman, my, my headset shut off. I caught the last sentence of what you said. I apologize. If you could repeat it. Yeah. Uh, so there was another question uh, related to that. So the new selection method, if you get out of the trim command and okay. if you just hold the mouse button down and drag it to do a fence, uh, that creates that uh, dynamic polyline, uh, the dynamic fencing, I guess, uh, yeah. outside of the command. Uh, you cannot replicate that when you are inside the trim command, but uh, that's only available when you're outside of it. I think Kazim also asked that question. Good, correct. You're talking about the crossing window. Um, he's talking about, you know the dynamic selection when you hold it down and you can select a, hold a round mouse button object? Down. It was added in 2015, or, you know, where you can make a, sort of an amorphous shape out of your selection. Oh, um, pick and drag like that? Correct, yes. Yeah, this is, so this is called a lasso, lasso selection set. Sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, this is um, new to AutoCAD 2015. I, I didn't even look to see if it was um, possible to use within a command. It is. So, um so we can make all kinds of pretty pictures and selection sets. Um, I guess I <laughs> that's how it works. Um, I I probably misunderstood the question. I'm so once you're inside the trim command, does that not work um, while you're trying to trim objects? Okay, selection? for trimming. Now for selecting the objects, I just used it in the trim command. So let's go back up here. Okay. And I'm going to go into the trim command, and it prompts me to select objects. All right, just as a cutting edge, I'm using that functionality right there. Okay, although I missed that one. Okay, um, then I'm done selecting objects that I want to use as a cutting edge. So now I'm going to say, okay, let's go ahead and trim this. And this is where it just goes into a crossing window. So it looks like, and that was a good question. I, I wasn't aware of that. I, actually, I didn't even think about it because lasso is still new. It's not how I typically select. But it appears that I can use it to select the cutting edge, but not to select the objects I want to trim away. Right. So hopefully that answered that. Um, whether that's as designed or just an oversight, I, I don't know. Yeah, where it's so new, maybe it's uh, something to consider down the line. Yeah, yeah, definitely something to uh, that I'm curious about now. So, yeah. All right, cool. Hey, thanks for answering that one too, uh, Norman. Anything else? I'm just reading through some of the ah, uh, okay. the questions here. Sorry for the the awkward no. pause. <laughs> it's okay. My awkward moments are worse. All right. I'm going to let Victoria look and interrupt me. And um, actually, I've, I'm speechless. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait, here's one. Um, while you're talking about the polyline selection, could you show how to hold the shift and select one segment of the polyline that can be deleted from the overall segment? So if you have a, a pilot, yeah, um, guess I've That's never. A new one for me. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I, it's gotta be new for me as well. Um, so let's uh, do that. Let's um. Do you have a multi multi segment polyline lying around somewhere? Um, let's go with. Um,
Now I do. Oh, okay. Po well, polyline or polygon? Well, polygon is a polyline. Oh, oh. Just a, I mean, it's just a closed polyline. Um, in fact, AutoCAD's telling me it is right up here. Um, so we're talking about the P edit function or just because what we can shift. we can hold shift and select one of the segments. Well, I'm holding you down on shift. So I think what they're talking about Volker. Hey, Sean. I think what they're talking about Volker oh. is when you have several objects and you select them. If you use the shift key, you can deselect just one object. So if you have, you know, if you select ten objects and you discover there's just one you don't want anymore, you can use shift to just deselect yeah. just that yeah. one and you don't have to go. That's that's how I'm reading the question. In the, okay. Like, and, like and this. And Volker, don't, you were selecting the grip in the center. Could you select a portion of the line that doesn't have a grip on it? Shift and click. Yep, that's what I'm doing. All it's doing is selecting the whole thing because it's one object. Right, but did you see how the other objects that you have selected still stay selected? All right, so yeah. you select all those. Now you can use shift and just remove just one of those. No, I um and I understand that. Right. Okay, I've actually used that quite often since release 12. Not 2012, but 12. <laughs> right. So now verb selection. Was, yeah, but you can't do that to an individual polyline segment. See, right now, having Correct. used shift to remove, I've I've removed the entire polyline. Uh, now I'm just picking on it. It adds a shift to remove it. Um, so, I mean, and that functionality, like I said, it's been around since release 12 when they introduced noun verb selection. Um, I am not familiar with any method to remove a segment, which is what I understood the original question to be. If of a polyline. And, if you hold shift down and then click it before the whole polygon is selected there, does that work? Well, let's give it a try. How's that? Because I learn something new every day. So I'm um, holding down on shift now. I'm going to pick. Okay. It does nothing. Mm, okay. So I, I don't know. I mean, I be interested yeah, if if I'm missing something I love learning and I don't mind being shown how to do something <laughs> in fact I, I love it so the, the person asking about it is saying that it works in civil 3d so it might be something ah like yeah products. yeah it it probably is yeah I'd be curious it sounds useful yeah. it does and there's a lot of stuff in the vertical applications that is very useful just like there's a lot of stuff in AutoCAD that, boy, I wish we had it in AutoCAD LT, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Well, you guys had me sweating bullets. All right. I, I didn't see any other questions in there. Did I? Hold on. Well, we got about a minute or so left. And I won't complain about getting a lunch on time. Oh, um, when I draw polygons, I do not see the midpoint grip like that. All I get are the vertex grips. Yeah, that's uh, because uh, you're probably using something other than 2016. Um, that, that was the new... Um, yeah, this is that... Um, so, let's go with... Ge geometric center? Yeah. Um, oh, come on, Volker. All right. GCEN, 1024. No, I'm sorry. I have to go with 1039. <laughs> <laughs> go line. Uh, he yeah. is using 2015. Yeah, that's why he's talking about this. This is a um, new geometric center option. And uh, let me just show you. I'm going to go type OS uh, to go into the drafting settings, OS object snap dialog. And this is the new functionality right here, geometric center. I love this. Well, then again, I love my OS snaps. Not a physical thing, people. Just, you know, just something, a tool I can really dig into.
All right. Well, looks like it's kind of slowed down. Okay. You know. So, hey, listen, everybody. Um, we look forward to any of you who would like to learn more about line types, how to create them, the different functionality we can build into them. I'll be showing that next week. So I look forward to anybody um, wanting to show up and be a bit geeky. Um, thank you for being here. We know your time's valuable, so we do appreciate um, the fact that you showed up to listen to us um, ramble our way through this. Everybody have a great week, okay? All right, Volker, I have uh, two last-minute questions if you want to fit them in real quick. I will. I'm going to um, go ahead and stop recording.